Hi guys, Harry here. Welcome to Scrap Science. So from the title of this video, you can probably tell that I'm now in the possession of an aspirator pump. This is a vacuum pump that just uses running water to generate like a pretty reasonable vacuum. And what we're going to do today is just a quick video, uh, double checking that it works, that it actually generates a vacuum, and we're going to try to measure just how much of a vacuum we can make with this thing. So first things first, uh, I'm going to need to connect this up to water, because water has to flow in here, and then the stream of water that comes out this little nozzle here drags air with it and pulls a vacuum from this port. So uh, this is a little bit of a weird uh, thing to try to connect a hose to, but I'll do my best. Well, I said it was going to be a tricky connection, and it definitely was, because I couldn't find any pieces of hose that would even remotely fit around this joint. So what I had to end up doing uh, is taping it on, which really isn't the best, but you know, it actually looks pretty all right. I think I've done a good job. Uh, so hopefully that stays sealed and we'll be able to run water through this hose and through the pump. All right, I've got it hooked up and we're now ready to test it. I've got water flowing through here. It's not a very good fitting. It's all leaking everywhere, but if we turn this on, we get a lot of water flowing through the aspirator pump. Now, if we dip it down into the water, just like this, it should start to pull a vacuum on this port here. So I'll block that with my finger just to check. Yeah, that's definitely pulling a vacuum from that port. We'll just say, leave it for a while, see how much. Yeah, see, so that was quite strong, I'd say. And there we are. Now that we've turned it off, and it's a bit quieter. We know it does work. We can pull a vacuum uh, from the port there. So now all that's left to do is to check how much of a vacuum we can pull with that. Now, I don't actually have a vacuum gauge with me right now. Uh, so what we're going to do to test the vacuum level is to see how much it changes the boiling point of water. With the glassware that I've got on hand right now, uh, this is the setup that I've come up with to actually measure that uh, boiling point of water. I have this round bottom flask here. I have boiling water in there. Pretend this is all connected up. Uh, we'll have a thermometer coming through right down into there to check the temperature of the vapor that's coming off. And then we'll have this connector connected up. I don't have many connectors, so this is the only one that'll work. And then we'll try to pull a vacuum from there which hopefully will pull the water through uh, at a lower temperature than 100 degrees. Now, I haven't done anything under vacuum before, not with glassware anyway. Uh, so my usual method of just wrapping the joints with Teflon tape won't really work in this case because that won't create a proper seal. Uh, so what I've got here is just some Vaseline, which I will have to just add to the joints to make them like a proper seal and hopefully that'll hold the vacuum as we pull it. So now this might be the worst setup I've ever made but we've got this tube running from the aspirator pump which should pull the vacuum straight out of this uh, monstrosity of an apparatus that I've built. So to test that I don't have anything in the thermometer port right now so if we go ahead and turn on the aspirator pump we should be able to pull a vacuum from this port here. And that's definitely pulling some sort of vacuum. Excellent. So now we can connect uh, the thermometer, start boiling this water and check under vacuum uh, what the boiling temperature of the water actually is. So I've got everything set up now. The heating mantle is turned on, the water is just about boiling, and the temperature is, if the camera would focus on the thermometer, there we are, it's just about uh, 80 degrees right now. Uh, the vapor coming through past the thermometer anyway. So we've got our vacuum line hooked up. I uh, 
Uh, I might turn that down a little bit. I'll turn this on and then hopefully when we start pulling a vacuum, the temperature of the vapor that's coming across the reading on our thermometer should decrease and then we'll be able to check uh, what pressure actually corresponds with that. So that is happily boiling away now. The reading on the thermometer is 100 degrees and we're now good to turn on the aspirator pump. Now if we leave that running for a little bit, hopefully the temperature on the thermometer should decrease. Now it all happened a bit too quickly uh, for me to film, but after turning the aspirator pump on, the temperature on the thermometer dropped all the way, pretty gradually, but then it kind of shot down all the way down to 60 degrees, which is actually pretty good. It indicates a pressure of about 0.2 atmospheres, which is a lot better than I thought. Uh, but I think I'm going to just try again. I'll see if I can get it on camera this time, uh, just to make sure that we are actually getting that kind of pressure. And we'll see if we can do any better running it the second time. We are just about ready to go again. Uh, water's boiling. We've got a reading of 100 on the thermometer. Can't bloody focus on the thermometer. Yeah, you can kind of see there. Uh, so we can now turn on the aspirator pump. And I think this time I'll try to hold this connection in just to make sure that that's getting a good connection. And we'll see if we can watch the temperature uh, drop as the pressure goes down. Yeah. So you probably can't see on the thermometer, but we've actually got down to around about 50 or below degrees there, which is pretty good. Right, one thing to remember, okay, don't just turn off the aspirator pump when you're done while the apparatus is still under vacuum. I remember that last time, but this time I accidentally just turned it off and everything just backflowed, sucked a whole bunch of the water in here straight back into the round bottom flask. Kind of lucky that, you know, it didn't break it because this is it, what? I mean, I guess it was only at 50 degrees in the end, but you know, all that cold water coming in wasn't too good. Anyway, the results of this test were even better than last time. We got all the way down to 45 degrees. It's the boiling point of water, that pressure. Uh, that corresponds with pretty much exactly 0.1 atmospheres, which is pretty impressive, I think, for just you know, a little glass tube that you pump water through. But anyway, there we have it. Uh, it does use a lot of water though, so in the future I'm gonna have to get a pump so that we can reuse water because uh, using that much water just for like a couple of minutes is a lot of wasted water. And it's kind of the reason why I've done it all in this bucket so we can use this water for other stuff. And once I get a good water pump and maybe something to fit on the end of there, we might be able to use this as a pretty good uh, a little vacuum pump for any distillations that we do. The reason I have this isn't actually for vacuum distillations. It's for a project that I'm going to be building in possibly the far future, really, like a few months away. I need to get a bunch of parts together, but hopefully what we're planning to build with this thing is an even better vacuum pump that reaches pressures far, far below uh, the 0.1 atmospheres. I won't tell you exactly how it works just now, but you know, hopefully that project will be on Scrap Science in the not too distant future. But till then, see you later.